Hello, Bezel T3. Have you ever struggled with trying to understand the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24? Jesus talking about the, the destruction of the temple and the signs of his coming and the signs of the end of the age? I, I think there's three questions there. Well, it's paralleled in Luke chapter 21. Now, we're going through the New Testament, reading together as a congregation, and last week we finished up the book of Luke. Uh, chapters 21 through 24, and then we began on last Friday the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. Our associate pastor, Jason Pedersen, did a teaching outside, of course, because we're worshiping outside at the moment. He did a great teaching on those last chapters, focusing a lot on that Olivet Discourse uh, in Matthew 24 and also what we see in Luke 21 that kind of parallels the same thing and then talked about uh, Paul's great words in that first chapter of 1 Corinthians. So I'm going to give you just the last part of Jason's teaching, because I think it's just great the way he ends up. But I encourage you to go to the link below and listen to the entire teaching. I, I know you're going to find it edifying and helpful and encouraging. So to do that. Take the time to do that, but listen to this right now. It won't take long, and I, I hope that you are blessed by what uh, God teaches you through his word. Paul says about the cross that through that God, I, God says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, Corinthians 119, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. So when you think of the world through wisdom, there's three ways the world always wants to know God. What are they? The way, the way of like contemplation. What's God like? Oh, I think he's like this. Okay, that's like speculation. The other way is the way of um, mystical encounter. I just want to experience God directly and immediately and in, in my inner soul. And the other way is the way of like moral effort. So those are like the wise ways of the world. The three natural ways people try to seek God is speculation. What's he like? Oh, I think he's like this. Mystical experience. I want to just encounter God. And then the other way is the way of moral effort. You ascend to God by what you do. And the foolishness of the cross, what does it do? It overthrows all three. God says, hey, don't speculate what I'm like. Here I come in Christ. And you know what? I come and I expose your expectations because I come in the weakness of human flesh. I come to be handed over and to be crucified and to be buried and, and raised victoriously over sin and death. And so the way of moral effort, he says, don't ascend to me. I'm coming to you. And the way of mystical experience, he says, you know, may what I've instituted and promised to bless be enough. And, and it is enough. Because listen to this. For consider your calling, brothers. Many of you were, not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Christ himself, according to worldly standards, foolish. Not many of you were powerful. Christ, weak. Son of man has nowhere to lay his head, is silent before the, all the accusations. These rulers and kings, they marvel that he doesn't defend himself. Not many were of noble birth. Think of him. Like, the, the virgin and the sky, like scandalous. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God has chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring the nothing to things that are. Why, God? Why do you do this? So that no human being might boast in the presence of God. You, you and I have no right to boast. What have you been given? What have you been given, Paul says, that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you hadn't? <laughs> All that you have, Christian, your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your, you, this, this vessel, this, this glorious treasure in this clay, weak, perishing vessel, the gospel, you've received from God. And listen to what he says. So that no human being might boast in the presence of God. Don't boast. 
just be thankful. And be, my favorite verse in the whole Bible. And because of him, God, his grace, the foolishness of the gospel, God's wisdom. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So do you want to glory? Do you want to boast? This is where you boast. Through thick and thin, through, through pestilence, through tribulation, through famine, through persecution, through physical infirmity, through difficult relationships, through even if you've stumbled, through the God who will pick you back up and never allow you to be cast headlong again. Because of Christ who became for us wisdom from God, our righteousness, our sanctification, our redemption. So that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Boast in the Lord this week. Stop grumbling. Stop doubting. Lament. Cry out to God. Tell Him how much you don't like it. But then boast in the Lord who does all things well in our nation for His glory, in the earth for His glory, and in your lives and your homes for His glory, and in this church for His glory. Let us pray. Father, we thank You for the foolishness of the cross. It's still foolish to us. We, we must hear it each week. We must uh, taste and see it in the sacraments because we are so proud and boastful that we can look to ourself and our strength, which is nothing. All that we have is yours. All that we have you have given us. And so may we boast in you, may we glory in you, may we lament um, to you, and may we find comfort and refuge in the one who became for us wisdom from you, our righteousness, our sanctification and redemption. Strengthen your sheep, Lord, we hear uh, the voice of our Savior. May we not follow strangers of our own heart, or the enemy, or whatever else the world would have us prioritize. May we follow you, even as we limp, knowing that you walk with us and that you strengthen us, and that you will never let us go. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.